Good morning, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with another post night shift ER COVID update. Continues to be very, very insane here. Um, last night, uh, there's a we have a, a tracking board, you know, that we follow things, and there's a little globe symbol uh, next to people that have COVID. And at one point, I looked over at the board, and, and basically three quarters of the of the patients on the tracker were COVID patients. It's it's insane. I've never. I, I keep saying this. I've never seen anything like it. I haven't. Uh, none of us have. It's it's. Uh, it is really um, uh, the amount of COVID patients I've seen in the last weekend. I think this weekend I've probably seen more COVID patients than I've seen, you know, at any other time. It seems like probably 60% of what we saw uh, was COVID. Many of them, you know, fairly sick, um, as usual. And has been talking about that we don't have any beds. So we've, we've got 20, 30 people boarded in the emergency department because there are no beds. The regional hospitals are all full, so there's limited place to transfer people. Um, you know, their beds are divided now between COVID beds and non-COVID beds. So we, we don't want to put a COVID patient in a COVID bed because you'll give everybody else around that person COVID. So sometimes we do get patients we can transfer. So I had a patient, a gentleman that had uh, a hemorrhagic stroke who um, had already had COVID. So he's, he's a COVID negative patient. We don't have uh, inpatient neurosurgery or a neurosurgical ICU at my hospital. All those people have to get transferred out. Um, if he had COVID, it would have been a problem and he probably would have gotten stuck here for an extended period of time. But since he doesn't have COVID, they have non-COVID uh, neuro ICU beds available in Charlotte um, and we were able to, to secure one and we're gonna send this guy down there. The weather's bad, we would normally fly him, but we're gonna have to take him by ambulance. But anyway, that's kind of the, the new normal around here. It's, it's very bizarre. Uh, for those of you new, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Galvin, uh, I'm board certified in emergency medicine. I also run a functional uh, precision medicine clinic in Charlotte where we really try to work at optimizing health and getting people feeling better. We also uh, work with post-COVID patients to kind of help them recover. And a lot of people we're finding have post-COVID sim uh, symptoms. And so because I've been sort of in this uh, since the beginning, I've realized that maybe more so than some and have we've implemented some protocols that are pretty healthy, helpful for those folks, especially folks that have brain issues um, related to COVID. Um, numbers, uh, 91 million cases uh, worldwide, nearly 2 million deaths. In the U.S., 23 million cases, we're up to 376,000 deaths. Worldwide, though, we have given out 20 million doses of, of the COVID vaccines. And in the U.S., we're up to 9.3 million doses. So 9.3 million of your fellow Americans have been immunized, at least with the first dose uh, so far. Um, going to, uh, this three nights in a row, I, I'm beat. I'm not going to make this super, super long today. Um, if you haven't seen the previous ones, we did, it might be worthwhile to go watch the one from the first night when I talked about um, COVID immunization uh, myths, um, because I think that's, it's, there's a lot of those and I, hopefully I debunked the majority of them. There was one I don't think I talked about, um, infertility. You know, there's this thing going around that the vaccine can cause infertility. Well, there's really no evidence that that's true. And how would you even know? We've only been given the vaccine out for, you know, a couple weeks now. So um, how would we know it could cause infertility? But there's no reason to think that it would. These mRNA vaccines, remember, they're in your system for so long, they don't have any long-term effect. All they do is they go in, they tell your body to start producing these antigens, the, the COVID spike proteins. Your immune system responds to them for 36 hours or so, then it's gone. And, and then the next time you get exposed, you get a little bigger response. And so that's why people are gonna have more side effects after the second vaccine than the first, most likely. Um, the, uh, I want to talk a bit about the mutations. You know, I've, me I've mentioned we've got these COVID mutations out there. Um, and there's a, a variant in England that is very, you know, England is the highest death rate per, per million people anywhere in the world. Their cases are, are through the roof. They're in a real bad situation there. And a lot has to do with this, this variant there. And it's not more deadly, but it's more infectious. And more infectious is way worse than more deadly because you get exponential growth. And that's what they're seeing there. And it continues to get worse and worse and worse. And the bad news is we know that variant's here. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not what's driving a lot of the, cra the craziness and 
um, Arizona and California and other places that things are really getting out of hand may well be that variant. But there's another variant in South Africa that may be more concerning. And that one has more changes to the spike protein. So while it is also very, very much more contagious, 70 to 100% more contagious, um, that South African one might be able to evade the vaccine, meaning it might be different enough that if you're vaccinated, you could still catch it. Now, they've done some small trials with both versions, Moderna and Pfizer, and they say that the the preliminary data looks like it does cover it. But I think if you listen to Dr. Fauci, he was a little he he seemed a little worried about that South African variant. Um, I don't think we've we found any evidence of that South African variant in the U.S. yet. Um, unfortunately, as we've learned from the pandemic, it's hard to keep a good virus down. You know, they tend to, the virus tends to, to get out no matter what we do to try to lock it down. Um, I want to talk about um, the flu because, you know, a lot of the people are, are, are believing these conspiracies. You know, they keep saying, where's the flu? The flu's gone. And you know what? You're right. We haven't seen any flu. I, I haven't seen a single flu case. Um, I think U.S. why we've had a thousand, I think recorded a thousand cases of the flu. So far this year, I think last year we had 65,000. So it's clearly a big conspiracy, right? We must be calling flu COVID or some, you know, somebody's out doing something wrong. No, it, it's, it's science. You know, let's think about it. The difference between SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID, and influenza is that, you know, the r naught of influenza is about 1.2, 1.3, meaning that every person that gets Influenza gives it to like 1.2 or 1.3 people more. The R not for COVID, uh, for SARS-CoV-2 is up to 2.8, maybe three. So it's far more infectious. And we talked about that logarithmic um, curve. And you know, and what have we told people to do to protect themselves? Distance, wear masks, wash your hands. Those are the three of the things we've been telling people to do. And I told you, I haven't, you know, all my staff, I've been exposed millions of, or not millions, but many times in the hospital, doing those really simple things, haven't gotten sick. Now, if you take a virus that's very contagious and you can knock those numbers back by doing those simple things, masking, washing hands, distancing, it's gonna have a, a far greater effect on a much less infectious vaccine, or virus rather. So those same things are far more protective against influenza and the flu than against COVID. So that's one reason why we're not seeing much flu. And I, I think I, I did a video at the very beginning of this, like before the flu season even started. And I said, I didn't think we'd have much of a flu season because it's, it's not gonna be able to get through these little defenses we put up. The other thing is because of COVID, we've had a record number of immunizations against flu. We had 192 million people get their flu shot this year. That's an absolute record. And so we've got a lot of people immunized against the flu. So that's good. Um, the high vaccination rates are, are, are going to lower things. So we've got, you know, essentially are achieving herd immunity, right? Because the reason we're not getting much flu is because there are not a lot of susceptible hosts. Viruses need susceptible hosts to, to, to propagate. If you're resistant, I've gotten uh, a vaccine, so I've got my flu shot, well, I'm resistant. You can't give it to me, and then it, it's harder. The, the flu, the virus can't get itself spread around. And if we then do masks and distancing, we really cut their ability to go from person to person. So the, the, the missing in action of the flu is not some big conspiracy. It, it's science, it makes a lot of sense, um, and it doesn't surprise me a, a, a bit, and it's not like Bill Gates or whatever, people are gonna probably message me privately about my you know, total ignorance about all things COVID because I'm, I'm a part of the system and I'm, you know, I'm shilling whatever. Um, you wouldn't believe the, the messages I get from people, you know. Uh, um, I have a little bit of an education of social media since March, I'll tell you that much. Anyway, um, on a lighter note, we just found out that gorillas can get COVID. Two gorillas at the San Diego Zoo, apparently develop URI symptoms and for some reason they tested them for COVID and they that's what they got. Um, hopefully they'll, I'm, I'm wishing the girl as well, hopefully that they'll feel better soon. Uh, I'm going to stop it there. Now I'm going to ask, a, I'm going to ask a, I'm going to have a request because you know I run this clinic right and we really are optimizing health and and wanting to make people healthier and you know we're going into a, a series of months where it's going to be really really 
dangerous. We're going to see a lot of bad news. And so good health and both mental, physical, metabolic health is really important. So I'm going to try to shift to doing more wellness videos. But what I'd like to know from, from people who are watching this is what types of things do you want me to talk about? Um, you know, in my clinic, we do everything from weight loss to hormone therapy. Um, we do precision medicine, advanced lab work, advanced cardiovascular testing, genetic testing. We do fitness testing, body composition testing. We do all kinds of things. I, I can really, uh, you know, I'm kind of an expert on all things wellness. So what I'd like is if you don't mind, if there's a topic in wellness that you would like me to cover, put it uh, down. We are actually hiring somebody at my clinic to help me with some of the workload because a, a lot of the things I am having to do myself and as you can imagine, I have a few things on my plate. But anyway, if you wouldn't mind putting it down and then we'll come up with a, a schedule and I will try to film videos about those wellness topics and we can get away from COVID in practice for when we finally get everybody immunized and we get out of this crazy situation we've been in for the last year. Everybody, um, please stay safe, especially over the next three or four months. If you have an opportunity to get vaccinated, please do so. If you have questions about the virus, please post them. I will do my best to try to answer them. Everybody stay safe, wash your hands, wear your masks, look after yourselves, look after your families, and look after those around you, and we will all get together. We will get through this together, rather. Good night.